So in case you're wondering why I'm not recording over here right now, it's because we have this person here sitting at this new desk. Recent YouTube videos, you probably have seen this backdrop here. Got my whole studio set up here. Everything from the OG office has been moved over here. And the OG office turned into, first it was, I don't know, like a, what do you call it? A conversation room, like a coffee room. Then we put a pool table in there and then it's just sat there. And when I went in there, I realized, oh my gosh, although I love this backdrop, gosh, there's just something about the old school backdrop that I missed. Not to further interrupt my wife as she's working. What are you working on, babe? A new digital product. Instagram. That's actually a great segue into my video today, what I'll be talking about. Okay, great. That's Perfect. awesome. I'm on page 50. 50? Knocking get it. it out. Get them. That's great. Get a girl. Okay, so I probably need to get out of here, stop bothering her, let her actually be productive, and I'm gonna go record this video to share what I'm getting ready to share. Let's go. Yep, so here's the pool table, folded up right here, and here's the old office. Oh, look how open it is. And this is my amazing setup. Tripod, light, what else do you need? Let's go. Oh my goodness. Welcome back to the channel. How have you been? It is your grateful host, Jeff Rose. Welcome back to the Wealth Hacker channel where we are dedicated to teaching you new ways to build wealth that is not taught to you in schools or by your parents. I haven't said that opening line in so long. I am so glad that I did not forget. There will be another video explaining to you where I've been because I've been absent from the channel just for a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. But I'm back for today for this video and what I want to do today was share two important lessons, two things when I look back on my online business journey. Whenever I started my website, started my blog, goodfinancialsense.com back in 2008, which I just double checked with Siri to make sure that my math is correct, that was 15 years ago. And I think about everyone that is starting an online business today or is in the newer process of starting an online business, there is a lot to understand, a lot to learn. And looking back over the past 15 years, recognizing that I've made just a few mistakes along the way, I wanted to share what are the two biggest mistakes that if I were to go back and if I were starting, an online business today, how I would do it different. And the cool thing, especially for someone that's watching this, if you were an entrepreneur, an online digital business entrepreneur, these are two things that are still relevant today that I promise you that you want to implement in your business some way, somehow. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive in. What is the first biggest mistake that I made? Before I share the mistake, let me give you some context. Started the blog, once again, 2008, self-taught myself SEO, search engine optimization, trying to figure out how I actually get ranked in Google for competitive keywords. Let, let me just say, I. I I figured it out. I took a brand new blog in a very short amount of time, if I recall, about a year, maybe a year and a half, I was getting 100,000 unique visitors per day. Let me pat myself on the back. Good job, Jeff, good job. So as I'm getting all this traffic that I don't even know how I'm doing it, I start hearing other online entrepreneurs highly suggest that I need to start collecting email addresses. And initially I'm like, what's the point? I'm, I'm getting all this traffic, I'm getting 100,000 unique visitors per month to my site. Why do I need their email address? Even if I got their email address, what am I going to send them? That just seems like this other thing that I have to do that I just feel like is a complete waste of time. It's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. So even though the people that were sharing this were very successful, I was just not willing to unstubbornize my thoughts, unstubbornize my opinions, and I just went about my merry way. Fast forward a few months, for the first time in my life, I experienced a Google algorithm update. And you don't need to know what that really is. All you need to know is that Google will update which websites are found in the search engines, that top one position or the top 10, or maybe you go from page one to page three. It was the first time I ever experienced anything like this. And I recall because it was April 11th. I don't remember the year, I remember the day because when I logged into Google Analytics, I saw something that made me want to puke. <gasps> What I saw was 
over 70% of my traffic literally drop overnight. It just went away. And I'm like, okay, is this an error? Is this a glitch? And I started talking to other website owners and I learned they had experienced similar drops. Not everyone experienced that drop, but I was one of them. And I remember for the next several days, I kept logging into analytics, hoping, praying that the traffic was gonna come back. It didn't for a very long time. It actually took me nine months to finally get back the traffic that I had. Back then, it was actually when I started my first YouTube channel. I think I started a podcast. Like I started doing all these things, trying to show Google that, hey, my site's still relevant, please. Put me in the search engine, please. During this time, I'm remembering all those people that told me, hey, you need to have an email list because if you have an email list, you have a direct line of contact to that person that visited your site so that you can email them, sharing more information about your blog, products that you offer. Maybe if you recorded a YouTube video, you can share your latest YouTube video. And if you ever have some sort of product or service to offer, you can also share that with them. But I had the mindset that I have all this traffic. I have all these views. Like, why do I need to have the email address? They're just gonna come back to my site and then they can see it then. No, no, that's not how it works. Same thing like social media. Maybe you're on Instagram, maybe you're on TikTok and you're getting massive traction. Then all of a sudden the algorithm doesn't like you anymore. And there's this other social media platform. What's it called? Oh yeah, YouTube. When you stop posting videos, guess what happens? The YouTube algorithm doesn't like you. And for those that wanna help with that YouTube YouTube algorithm, you know what to do, smash that like button. So when I finally took the advice of everyone that told me to start collecting email addresses, I did. I created a lead magnet, had the opt-in form on my site, and then the next thing I know, I'm getting 20, 30, 50, 100, sometimes 200 emails a day. And that was with a fraction of the traffic that I used to have. And I could only think, man, if I would have collected those email addresses from the 100,000 unique visitors that were coming to my site, how many more could I have? especially if you are a online digital creator and you have Instagram, you have TikTok, you have YouTube, or you have a podcast. If you can collect those email addresses, that's something that never goes away. You don't have to worry about the algorithms changing their mind and being crazy or being bipolar. You can always contact and email them at your leisure whenever you want, when you need to. Mistake number two. So most of my business was driving search engine traffic to my website website and then converting an affiliate conversion. And it is not a horrible strategy. Affiliate marketing can literally make you millions and millions of dollars. It has made me millions and millions of dollars. But I've seen other people suggest to have a product of your own, a service of your own. And coming from being a practicing financial planner, my product was my financial planning. I was a service-based professional. So people would work with me, they would pay me a fee, and that's how they worked with me. And there was just something about that. Like I just wanted a disconnect from offering anything else. So there was like this attraction to having an affiliate relationship where I could just record videos. I could produce blog content. I could produce podcasts, produce informational, educational, and engaging content, and then entice somebody to take action, take that next step where I didn't have to have any more of a relationship with them. Because that was the one thing that I was trying to get away from because I got tired of working with people just straight up. I just got tired of it and I just needed a break. So that's why affiliate marketing was so attractive. But once again, I often heard people that were very successful, had achieved a level of success that I was also looking to. And I heard from them that I should diversify, that I should have products of my own to sell, to market, because I would be in control of my product. And I'm like, yeah, once again, I, like, what do I do? What product do I create? Who's my target market? It just was like all this work that I just did not want to do because the affiliate side was so much easier. But eventually I, I started to listen. Uh, the very first digital product I created was a course targeted towards financial advisors that were interested in growing their financial planning practice using social media, using online marketing. And that was the first digital product. Instead of creating like a $37 PDF or a, a $57 PDF, I just went all in, created a very comprehensive course. The price point of that course was $25 to $3,500. 
And in the first year, I made over 100 grand. I think I did another 100 grand the second year. Was on track to do that again. And then I just got, I got bored with it. <laughs> There's like a common theme here. I tend to get bored with things. So when I think about the biggest mistake that I made was not having a digital product that was servicing a target market that I was passionate about. Because the financial advisor, like I should have realized that was also a space that I needed time away from. And that's one of the reasons why I sold the financial planning practice. That's why I stopped marketing the course to financial advisors because I just did not want to be a part of that industry anymore. But reflecting back, I definitely wish that I would have created a digital product that I could market to a much larger audience. And it wasn't really until the later part of last year where my wife, Mandy, who you saw earlier in this video and you, who you will see more of on this channel, that we decided to go all in on the digital business side. She has really dove back into the business. She is like learning Instagram, which she already knew it, but she took some time off as well. And she has learned so much in the algorithm, on the reels, the stories, things that I'm just completely oblivious to. And we have a target market and we have a certain, like we know who we wanna to talk to. And that led us to creating, guess what? Our own digital product, which currently is a course the Passive 1K Blueprint, which is a course to show you how to build, sell, and launch your first digital product in less than 30 days. And it is a course that I am dang proud of. It's a video course. You know, I have a link to that if you want to check it out. And we have other lower tiered, lower ticket items that we're producing. You saw that she was creating a digital product right now just because she's had a lot of people asking her about Instagram and how to grow their Instagram channels. There's just, there's so much more opportunity there. But these are the things that looking back, because I am such a perfectionist. If I put something out, I want to make sure that it's top notch. And sometimes that's a good quality to have. But if your perfectionism is preventing you from actually putting putting yourself out there. If your perfectionism is silencing you, then that is not a good quality. And I'm grateful to have my wife who really pushed me. We pushed each other to get this course out there. And now I feel good. But once again, big mistake, wishing that I would have had something more like I would call a flagship product that we could market to an audience and something that we just stood by, that we knew that we put our heart and soul into, that we knew could honestly help people. And that's what this course is. And that's the two big mistakes because if I would have had an email list and I had a digital product, boom. I'm grateful for the amount of money that I've made. It's obviously given us an amazing life, an amazing lifestyle that I could never imagine. But when you go back in time and just think, hmm, if I wish I would have done a few things differently, like those are a few of the things that I would have. So if you are a new creator, a new online digital business entrepreneur, please listen. Start collecting email addresses. Use services like ConvertKit or MailChimp or Aweber. They all allow you to collect email addresses for free from the get-go. There's also System.io that also allow you to build, I think, up to 2,000 contacts before they start charging you. So there's really no excuse not to collect email addresses with all these free providers. If you do not have any clue on a digital product that you should create, and if you are a service professional, if you're an online entrepreneur, I cannot think of any niche or industry that wouldn't benefit from having a digital product, even a lower tier product. It's amazing that having your own product, even if it's a 50 page PDF, there's something about creating that content and delivering it to people that just immediately puts you as being an expert in their eyes. I'm telling you, it is the truth. It happens, but you just gotta do it. Like you just have to do it. And you can use Canva to create a beautifully designed digital product, sell for cheap, give it away. And if you're not sure, how to go about it. We actually have a free PDF you can download. I'll have a link. It basically shows what you need to know to make up to six figures a month with digital products. Also gives you 70 digital product ideas that you can create. Once again, I'll have a link in the description. You can check that out just to get you on the path of getting those wheel spinning to understand all the different opportunities that exist out there. So quick recap. One, email. Two, digital product. Three, get going. Thanks again for being here. We'll see you on the next vid. Until next time, peace.